what is important is to take the prevention steps and then we do what we call contact tracing. Okay. If there is, a, there is a, what we call a reasonable doubt, yeah, for him to have uh, um, develop, probably co got it from here, which is highly unlikely because we are low risk, and the most important risk factor for a low risk country like Uganda before we got this case was travel. Travel is what exposed you because initial cases are actually imported. So it's very difficult. It suggests that somehow maybe someone imported it, then he got it, yes. which is a very unlikely scenario. Be that, be, uh, whatever the case, it's important to do what's called contact tracing, starting from the people he traveled with in the plane mm -hmm. to the people in, he, he interacted with before he left, just in, in case it happens. I'm sure they followed protocol, because that team is led by doctors, Dr. Jane Ruther Cheng. I saw my colleague uh, from the medical association, Dr. Kia, giving very scientific, detailed science, which, uh, which instills confidence in the population that the doctors know what they are talking about. So they must have followed protocol and assessed uh, the risk uh, profile. And there are those high risk, as I told you, proximity. Probably those who shared the same cabin, mm -hmm. okay? And those who came from the same countries, high risk countries. It's possible that some came from low risk countries. I don't know where this flight was from. I haven't studied it. It was from Dubai? Yes, it was from That's Dubai. A very, you know, Dubai is an international hub. Yes. Yeah, regarding this, uh, this infection. So if maybe they was conducting business in Dubai and moved around is high risk than someone who was transiting. Mm -hmm. Transiting. So they, 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 they must have used what's called triage. You know, if I'm in Mulago casualty, and say, unfortunately, that explosion, say in 2010, where, you know, in World Cup, there was an explosion, and the truck of, of police brings the casualties or victims to Mulago. Mm -hmm. There's what's called triage you move and attend to the very, very injured first. Put a line, maybe put blood, and then there are those who just need counseling. Yeah. They just traumatize and they have a bit of sharp nails. So that's what happens there. When they get these 100 people or whatever from the plane, they triage, depending on the risk profile. Those with symptoms, of course, those ones are very high risk. Immediately they go for isolation and maybe medical care. Those without symptoms, then things like travel history are the ones which become important. Mm. And I suppose that's what they use to judge who will go, who will not go. Mm. But if you look at the clinical profile, yeah, the natural history of the disease, is that uh, out of every 100 who get the infection, majority by far, actually four-fifths, or 81% to be precise, but we can just say 80% to make it easy, mm. will uh, not need hospital care. Just be outpatient, go get Panadols, drink lots of fluids, drink juice, vitamins, and so on, and, you know, the usual flu. Uh, go down there, uh, get this, uh, you know, uh, steam baths, if you can play a local steam baths or steam in your basin, mm. put there these concoctions, all that helps, by yes. the way, mm. to manage the symptoms. Then 14% will need hospital care. They'll need to be admitted either in OPD or in uh, inpatient, okay? OPD for some hours and then discharge, what we call daycare. Or they might actually be admitted for several days, depending on their severity, with a drip to rehydrate them, yes. give paracetamol to bring down the fever, and maybe antibiotics, because the, the body system is weakened that now not only the virus has weakened the system to the extent that the bacterial infections become opportunistic. They take advantage of the weak system and give antibiotics and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are about 14%, isn't it? Yes. Now, 5% will need critical care. They'll need to go into ICU. Very highly dependent uh, situation where they are being uh, supported to breathe. You know, it's called ventilation. And these machines, for example, one called extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO technology. Probably it's there in Mulago, but uh, it, it, it's highly intense. You need very highly trained doctors called an 